Good morning. Welcome to Caddix TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Tuesday, June 24th, 2014. It's a very seismically active day today. There was a 7.9 earthquake that struck in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska last evening. The main quake was about 15 miles from Little Sitkin Island in Alaska. It was followed by uh, 17 measurable aftershocks in the two hours after the quake. Initially, a tsunami warning was put out all the way down the Pacific coast as far as in Southern California, but after two hours, the warning was canceled. There have been no reports of any damage or injuries. Meanwhile, in New Zealand, three strong earthquakes struck uh, southeast of Raoul Island in New Zealand. Uh, they were of uh, the magnitude of 6.9, 6.3, and 6.2. They all struck within 45 minutes of each other. It, uh, the quakes hit near the eastern edge of the Australian tectonic plate, one of the most active seismic regions in the world. Again, no reports of any damage or injuries. Ed Noonan's insurer, reinsurer, uh, based in Bermuda Validus, has agreed to acquire U.S. insurer Western World Insurance for $690 million in cash. Noonan said last night that the combination with the New Jersey-based Western World would realize, quote, a key strategic goal while opening up opportunities for its Bermuda staff. Western World has a 50-year track record of profitability has a strong brand name and also is a uh, American leader in binder business or delegated authority placement. Um, Western World's book value was estimated to be about 518 million, so the purchase of 690 million by Validus, which is all going to be in cash, represents a premium. Florida Citizens Property Insurance Corporation expects to reduce rates for almost 70% of its policyholders next year in 2015. Um, Florida Citizens is one of the entities, not the Florida um, Catastrophe Fund, but the Florida Citizens is an entity which has been purchasing reinsurance, taking advantage of the cheap prices. So as a result of the cheap prices, they now say that uh, the majority of citizens policyholders will actually see an actuarially sound rate. So here's the breakdown. It seems as if uh, 58% of policyholders will see rate reductions of up to 11%, 10% of policyholders will see uh, flat rates, and 24% can see an increase of 5 to 11%. That's actually quite remarkable. My hat is off to citizens. Meanwhile, um, former Treasury Secretary of the U.S. Hank Paulson and ex-New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and an hedge fund billionaire Tom Steyer have joined together to release a report entitled Risky Business and argue that American companies should treat climate change as any other business threat. The report says climate change could cost the country billions of dollars over the next 20 years. It's the product of a bipartisan group of former cabinet officers, lawmakers, corporate leaders, and scientists. Paulson said that the goal of the report is to depoliticize the climate change debate and instead focus on how it poses an economic risk to American business. Finally, we have the Republicans, instead of arguing about the science, coming together to recognize that there is a need to actually do something about it. Michael Bloomberg, for example, has already pledged $100 million to make climate change an issue in upcoming American elections. The big broker Willis apparently confirms that it intends to establish its own Lloyd's managing agency. This would be uh, on the back of its stake as a co-owner in the current startup uh, Insure Acapella. The global broker finally confirmed that it had a stake in Acapella after speculation uh, about the stake since the company was founded back in 2012. Willis is one of the first brokers to obtain a controlling interest. They have a majority stake in a Lloyd's reinsurer since the regulations on broker ownership changed in mid-2009. John Cavanaugh, the president of Willis Re, said uh, in September of 2009, Willis went back to Lloyd's and said, we have an appetite to reinstate our London market business, our Lloyd's underwriting business again. We now have a conjunction with Pembroke, a syndicate called Acapella, which we hope to transition and translate into our own agency over time. Willis has the majority stake in that entity. A Russian freight train has derailed after an explosion in the eastern Ukraine in the Donetsk region. Uh, on Friday, a ceasefire was announced, but about an hour later, fighting had already broken out. 
One railway mechanic said he believed the attack on the train was part of the ongoing confrontation between Russian separatists and Ukraine nationals. The incidents being investigated, 14 carriages were thrown off the rails. Witnesses say Boko Haram, the Islamic extremist group in northern Iran, has abducted more than 60 girls and women and 31 boys from villages in northeast Nigeria on Sunday. Security forces deny the kidnapping. However, witnesses are saying that it in fact occurred from four villages. There's no way to independently confirm the report. Boko Haram has been demanding the release of detained members of its group in exchange for release of the 200 plus hostages that they already have. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.